This is the Battle of Thoroughfare Gap. So training is now at four. Logistics four, reconnaissance four. Yeah, going well. 72 reputation, 330 cash. I am gonna take that next time, or at the end of this battle. Don't need it right now. So Grant, yes, Grant is in command. And we have a couple more officers that are gonna get their perks and move to Corps Command. Bobby Woods, finally gonna get him to Corps Command, I think. So here are my units, a bunch of Lorenzes and then some 61s. Obviously I have scaled all my units up. Also I have all the men in my army in units in the Reserve Corps. So this is going to scale up the battle. I have one three-star uh, Whitworth. Then I brought in these units that have their second perk that need to scale up. So everything I'm doing is about grinding XP for my army right now. And I don't know that's, that that um, I don't know that driving up scaling is the best way to do this. Uh, it's what I went with. If you were to build ballast units, you would drive down scaling and make this easier. But I wanted to drive up scaling in these last two battles. It also means I'm going to drive up my losses, 21,000 versus 22. If, if I deleted my oversized units, then I would have dri driven them down to 21. So it would have reduced their numbers by 1,000, maybe 1,500. So I'm going to take a position that uh, Pandakraut uses in this battle. It works. Uh, I'm very happy with it. I thought about bringing some better artillery, and that would have been a... Well, here's the thing. I'm now at the point where I'm trying to grind as much XP for my army as possible. So it's kind of like my commanders. It's like as soon as a unit, a commander gets his third perk or his third star, then I'm looking for a two star to replace him in, in core command. I'm breaking down units so that I can form good artillery. And then if all I can form is two star, then I need to get that artillery in until... Um, it gets a third star, and then, then they go park in reserve, and the next bunch of two-star units will fight. So it's grinding XP on a three-star unit is not going to help the army in the long term. And keeping my losses down now is not going to help my army. I have, what is it, almost 80,000 men at the end of this battle? Th those men need to get on the field and get their first unit perk. That That's what has to happen. If I was short of men, then I'd have to fight a different kind of battle. But but no. Oh, the AI has two-star skirmisher units. And I think he has two- and three-star infantry here in this battle. His infantry is fairly ineffective. The big killers are, of course, the skirmishers. And one of his artillery units hides. Is Usually you can spot his two artillery. But in, in this battle, one of them gets into a position where I have trouble finding him. And then he's in 100% cover. He's hard to kill. And he, he inflicts losses on my army. I, I'm not worried about this. Uh, Two-star infantry charging across water and then up a hill. That's that's not going to go well. So I, I brought the Whitworth for the range. I, I could have brought... Like, all of my best guns are now three-star units. So, you know, that's what I do. I, I take my best men and form the best artillery units that I can. But the only reason I'm bringing the Whitworth is the range of this gun. I can park this guy on this hill and hopefully kill his artillery. That's... That's the idea. I could have brought a three-star James to a three-star 24 Howitzer. Um, I have two 20 Ps, three-star. Yeah, I thought about bringing the James, but they're three stars. They don't need the XP. My two Napoleons are two stars. They need the XP. So. 
that's what I'm bringing. And, and the um, 24H needs the XP too, because he's... I think he's a two... Yeah, he's a two star. So my other 24 howitzer is a um, is a three star. So I didn't bring him. He doesn't need the XP. He's already uh, ready for second bull run. So I have my infantry sitting back a little bit um, on my right flank to allow him to get into the water. Yeah, I have a detached skirmisher over my far right. I'm hoping he gives me spotting on his artillery, his other artillery. This guy's going to die. So yeah, I'm not concerned at all. Like, he's charging in. Good. Two star. 2,500. Again, if you want to scale these guys down, it's easy to do. Don't build a bunch of infantry units of 4,000, which I have. And, and, you know, if you build your units at, um, let's say, 2,000, which is what I was using up to this point, and I intend to use for the rest of the campaign, the, the units are this big so that they can get experience, bleed down a little bit, and be about 2,100, let's say, for second bull run. And the reason, particularly my two-star infantry, I want to be able to break them down and form more two-star artillery. Hopefully, my two-star infantry will be very close to a third star when I break them down, so my artillery only has to fight a couple of battles to get their third star. Yeah, one of my infantry takes a lot of knocks here, and it's because he just has a boatload of snipers. And, um... Yeah, my unit on the... My two units on the left are going to have trouble staying in cover, so they're going to exchange some shots with the enemy in open ground, and that's going to be it's going to be bad. Okay, my commander isn't here. Harris is a very low one star, so his ability to fall back is terrible. Okay, we won that, but I need to get my commander back here and buff. Yeah, and buff him back. Yep, there, there are his two-star uh, snipers. Okay, he's coming in two-on-two, two, so I'm trying to get my units positioned so if we get into melee, he doesn't get two-on-one. We're also trying to stop his charge, which works, but now I'm exchanging shots in the open. That just means losses for me. So the right ploy is to go ahead and just fall back to the next you know, to the next line of woods. Standing here and exchanging shots is just going to drive up losses, and there's no reason to do it. But I'm counting on my um, 24H to drive him away. His sniper is, you know, just standing there taking shots. Okay, now I have two on one. I should be able to get on the flank, both flanks of this guy. My 24H is actually on the flank of the guy in the woods. Oh, look, he has another sniper of 369. Okay, this guy of 1,200, I'm not really worried about him. He's going to lose. In fact, my two-star should be able to get some good XP. Yeah, we're just crushing him. So yeah, I think one of his artillery is already dead, but the other one I can't find. And, and the other thing is, like I brought... For artillery. It, I think if I were to do this again, I'd bring five. I have plenty of infantry here. Um, I think I'd bring five. One more artillery would have been very good. Maybe my three-star 24H. Or, or just a three-inch gun. Just a three-inch... Two star, three inch, just like maxing out kills. Would have had nice range, would have been great, would have been cheap. Yeah, this 1600 charging up this hill is 
he's going to get just crushed. There's too much artillery there. Okay, this guy coming in. Yeah, 2,000. That that guy of 1,000, I lured him in to take shots from all directions. But this guy of 2,200 coming in one-on-one -on -one with Harris. And look how slow he falls back. He's not tired. He's just slow. So you hit fall back and these guys hardly move. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, of course, when they charge, they're very, very fast. Now here I am again exchanging shots in the open with this guy, and this isn't good. Harris already has a bunch of losses, and part of it is I can't see his snipers, which have been, I think, picking on him too. So we're going to fall back. We have, we have plenty of time. You just have to retake the the objective. Okay, I'm now going to move some units to, you know, the, there's a unit that comes in behind the army. I'm going to go deal with him. My infantry and artillery is fine. So I'm reshuffling my artillery to get ready for the attack that's about to come in. This guy of 1700. Harris has taken a lot of losses, so that's good. But he, I think he's the only guy that takes a lot of losses. Yeah, the 24H is canister range for the 24H, perked for accuracy. Yeah, the 24 howitzer is just very, very good. Yep, those snipers. So his... I think his two best units are going to be the snipers, which are going to kill about 400 each. He has one infantry that does well. Probably somebody who exchanged shots with Harris in the open, that's my guess. And his artillery does well. And the rest of his army is pretty ineffective. Okay. Fresh unit coming in, charging. I should have turned my artillery around. He should have taken three shots. So I'm trying to decide, okay, who's going to fire at this guy? The 12H is going to, or the 12 Whitworth. I'm going to have one artillery fire at this guy. Should be enough. And because he's charging in, maybe I'll have everyone else just fire forward. 24 howitzer. Yeah, he's already routing. Oh, shattered. Guy on the right shattered. So yeah, he's, he's... My units in the woods are getting lots of kills, taking few losses. It's great. My Whitworth is in a bad position. I'm going to lose 24 men. I'm not going to lose a gun, but I almost did. And so I should not... I, I knew better than to have him there. In fact, I had given that gun orders to move, but not soon enough and not far enough away. So of course he's targeting the Whitworth. So I'm trying to have my infantry run up and drive him off. Nope, he's going to fire at the Whitworth because he knows what has the, uh, you know, the AI knows. The AI knows who is uh, the high dollar value target. Yeah, he has a lot of skirmisher units. So I'm going to send two infantry to the right to isolate law. That's probably overkill. And everybody else. I, I retake the flag, so that resets. I think it's 45 minutes. So another 45 minutes. I think the battle goes to 10.30 p.m., I think. So tons of time. I don't know what I'm doing on the far left. I shouldn't be doing that. There's way too much over there. I should fall back to the wood line. That's a mistake.
just let the enemy charge across this open area, hit him with all the artillery in the world. Wear him down. Yeah, those, those units in the open, that's a mistake. Yeah, what I, do, what I don't appreciate is how many snipers he has. Yeah, what, what I'm doing in the center is working out perfectly. What I'm doing on my left is just going to drive up my losses. Because he has, I don't know, three or four snipers. And I, I can't win that. It, so my unit of 2,000 against his unit of 181, I'm going to lose that. My two units on his 1,600, I'm going to win that, but... Okay, I, I don't see his artillery, but I just saw the puffs of smoke in the video. So he's there, and it's difficult to see his snipers too. So of course what I wanted to do is get back into this cover, uh, but I didn't need to do that. So I'm going to spread my artillery out. Okay, now I see him. So the guy I sent around my far right flank and got in behind him now has visibility of his artillery. Unfortunately, I think that's 22 guns. That's a lot of guns. And he's in 100% cover. So I'm going to have... Um, I learned something about cover and how it works. Like up until this point, I've been using cover to my advantage, but I never really thought about the enemy being in cover because I've tried to catch him in the open or in low ground or in water. And I've been really lucky that that's happened so far. But now he's in cover. He has 500 men in cover. I think they're Napoleons. And he's just very hard to kill. And then he's going to have an infantry unit get in the woods, those same woods, and he's going to be really hard to kill. I'm not concerned about this 1500. My commander is there. We're going to pop this guy. Perfect opportunity. He's isolated. His artillery is firing at my skirmisher, and we got a capture. That's that's good. Get two on one, get the capture. Lots of artillery support. And I have a, there's a guy in the upper right corner. So my 24 howitzers up there. We can kill one of his units and then capture the second one. That's my goal. So I'm stacking up two units up there. His, boy, his, his snipers are just... Why is he charging? That's infuriating. And look at the damage he's doing to my unit. Runs up, kills a bunch of men. I fire at him, do nothing. It's insanely unbalanced. And, and... I've decided if I come into any battle and he ever again has three-star sniper units, I'm going to just... I'm going to reduce them to 150 in size. Three-star sniper units are crazy OP. Completely ridiculous. Okay, so we finally killed his artillery. Fair enough. It took a while because of the cover the guy was in. So this unit of 1,400... He's going to be in 100% cover too, and it's amazing how little damage we actually do to him while he's in the woods. I'm not unhappy with this, that my units get to just grind up their firearm skill. And really, we just need to pause while I take care of the upper right-hand corner. Okay, his unit shattered. Now get in position to just charge this guy, this last guy, and capture him. And these, these guys in the south, two units will just grind firearms, but really doing terrible damage. I have... Only my Whitworth is hitting him, so I, I decide I need, to, I, I need to move my artillery. My other Napoleon isn't doing that much. 
his three skirmisher units on my right, on the right side of the map, are just incredibly frustrating. Okay, finally he's flashing white, so we're going to charge. My commander is going to take care of that. Then I'm going to move everybody on top of these stinking sniper units. 130 and 130, and they're just a nightmare. I'm more concerned about those two 100-man skirmisher units than all of his infantry combined. Yeah, at this point I wish I had a uh, some melee cav. Thousand man, let's say two units of a thousand melee, that, that would be perfect. Okay, now the commander needs to move south and get ready to kill these skirmishers. I have, I can get the 24 howitzer down. Artillery and infantry and detached skirmishers firing at these guys will rout them. And once you start routing them over and over, they're, they're much less of a threat. But they've already done the damage. I mean, they've, they've already done the damage to my army. So I'm going to lose about 3,000, and 1,000 of it's going to be a couple of skirmishers. And again, you can lower your losses by scaling the enemy down. The enemy scales up pretty hard in this battle. I scaled him up as high as I could. Uh, you may not want to do that. I'm scaling him up because I have plenty of men, and I need the XP. So you could easily get out of this battle with 1,500 losses. I could have cut my losses in half. Yeah, now the howitzer's there. His, I should be able to rout his skirmishers, and they're, you know, this one guy's 88. He's still going to win any exchange. Any exchange I have with him, he's going to win. He's going to kill more than he loses. Okay, finally the infantry unit flashed white. Uh, I'm not unhappy with that. We were able to grind XP, grind firearms. But Whitworth didn't get that much out of it, but everybody else did. And and you can see I brought my Napoleon over, and he got to do some shots. Okay, Colquitt got tired. Scales is going to... Uh, must be the brother of the um, soon-to-be two-star general. Scales. Yep, got the capture. That's what we wanted. So we, I shot at him until we, he was flashing white and then charged him, and that's good. Now we're going to take our time and, with artillery, detached skirmishers, and infantry, kill his skirmisher units and capture the ammo wagon. And while this was a bloody battle, I got the XP I wanted out of it. Um... First, we'll get the full wipe. And because we have, what, 10 more hours, I think, I could do this just pretty much with artillery. Just sit back, spot the enemy, and just fire artillery. Ooh, the 24H got a lot of kills. Milroy, 1,200 kills. Very nice. Milroy is perked for accuracy. So what I'm doing is I'm charging at the supply wagon. And he shatters. Everybody else can move. I, I should turn off the Whitworth. That's just a waste of ammo. 
Oh man, I hope I'm going to turn off my supply wagon. Yeah, I did turn off the... I hope I turned off the resupply. And he shatters, it doesn't matter. I didn't want to resupply the Whitworth. It's expensive. Okay, 2,700, 2,800, um, 13, 14 to 14,000, right? 13, 14 plus. So short of five to one, which is fine, but you could you could definitely do better. Um, but I got the XP I wanted. So the 24 Howitzer is only a two star on his way to three. Lorenzis did well, lots of kills. The Whitworth did what it was supposed to do. Kill his artillery. The Napoleons eh, would have liked some more kills. Look at that, 390. Then he had uh, infantry with 380. Then 270, 219. Those are skirmishers. And then the rest of his units are, are doing nothing. So his, his two artillery actually did nothing. I, I didn't remember that correctly. Um, so his, his artillery did nothing. His infantry did nothing except for one unit. And the rest of it was his skirmishers. There we go, Scales, two-star, Major General. And then Lewis Scales got promoted to Colonel, must be a brother. Okay, Lorenzes, Harbors Ferries, I don't know what that is. Oh, he had Jameses. He had, he had uh, Napoleons and James. He had the James. Yeah, he, he scales up in training so it's 7,700. Yeah, 77. So he, he, um, he scales up in um, training and armory, no matter what the numbers say. Transfer of recruits, 65, 44, 39. And a small debuff to army size. So 79, about 70, about 88,000 men. And I'll, I'll get all of them onto the battlefield. Again, you can scale this battle down and make it very easy and very inexpensive. But okay, now I want to show you what I do. Um, I will spend days in camp. Uh, before Kettle Run, I spent days in camp reorganizing my artillery until I was satisfied. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in 1st and 2nd Corps uh, the brand new 2-star Generals. Reserve and 3rd Corps is going to be um, my 3-star Generals, but I'm only going to take two of the perks because of the incredible bonus I have given to XP. So even though they could take their 3rd perk, they're only going to have two. And then as soon as I get some more two-star generals, they will replace my best generals. So we have Grant and Scales. Scales started with us at the train station. I could buy this guy, but I, I don't need to. I have plenty of good officers. Because of the previous purchases I've made just for this moment in time, I have plenty of good officers. I don't need to buy any more. Hey, okay, these guys got a perk. That's that's terrific. Army's looking very good. So now what I want to do is take all of the good officers out and then put them in the army based on their rank. And this is an easy way to do it. Just swap, get them all out and they'll be put in order based on their um, level of experience. So there they go. I'm just counting how many I have. Get him out of there. Okay. I have a couple good colonels. Need to get them out so they're put in in the proper order. There's a Brigadier General I almost forgot about. No, not him. I need low-ranking guy. Okay. So go through McClellan, Harland, Bobby Woods from the train station, and then one after another, 
by rank Franklin, actually a Corps commander historically. There's Loomis. It's actually third Corps and then reserve. Okay, here's how you expand the army. You just move a unit over. Just flip to anything and you'll get the option. There you go, all the officers are there. These colonels are good enough. These high level colonels are just as good as brigadier generals. This guy is a little bit underpowered, but he'll be fine. And this is what I have left. It's actually a bunch of lieutenant colonels. It's terrific. I might buy, yeah, there's a good lieutenant colonel. That's a perfect rank for an artillery unit. Okay, I've already purchased all the good guns. I have $428,000. Just seeing how much things cost. What I want is the 61s. Nice, cheap, effective. So 24 really terrible, 24,000 really terrible men. I want to get them on the field, get some XP. I'll make units out of the, these. Um, these new units are get a free weapon. Not bad, you know, not bad. So the guys who just came in have 19 efficiency. My goal is they fight one, maybe two battles most. They get their first unit perk. Then we're off to the races. Probably if, if I can get that at second bull run, that would be great because I'd like to have all these guys at one unit perk going into Antietam. So I hope that was interesting. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, scaling up the enemy at second bull run is, um, you know, do that at your own peril. You might want to scale it down if you want to make the battle a little bit um, easier. I went with it. I took the heavier losses for the tiny bit of more XP and weapons recovery. Um, I don't. I don't know. It probably taking a thousand fewer losses would have been the better play. But I took it, and um, now we're. I'm going to build the army for second bull run and see how that goes. So I'll see you there.